and I tool far too fast, and then I sort of crack on a little bit and those people come in. But hands up, anyone think that I've stood on my glass still? Which one do you think is the light? Is it a lie that I've stood on my glass and flip flops? Okay. Is it a lie that I can sing the entire Jim Pirates Ken Dan song? You have a few. Okay. Oh, and I am a lie that I'm distantly related. I was fairly split. But I have stood on the glass and flip flops, but I can't imagine that you get like the slurry cold tones. Oh, uh, I am physically related to the man who the SS when he threatened off coastal on my own non It caused a family name change for a few generations. And, uh, but I can't see the entirety of the Vodden Major General Sar and drew the match first, which is the first third. You'll go through that demonstrations at the bar later. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what well, report to that? That's so you get to know me a bit. I'm like quirky. This is two words that other choosers use for me. I am quirky. Um, but this is actually me. I'm a pal Osmond, I run Osmond Education, which at the moment is just me. And that's okay. But it's in a bright, not quite sure way yet, but we'll get that. Uh, I've shortlisted this year for professional tutor of the year, best online tutor, and best second tutor of the year. I'm dropping in triple nominated into everything that I signed to. Uh, Forgive me, they've got pretty badges and they're big for it. Uh, I am a mum of two, sort of that kind of size, uh, but wife of one, probably just as well. Uh, and a big, a big tea drinker. So if you want to chat to me later, probably the best place to buy it is buy the tea and the coffee. Um, but there we go. Uh, so we're talking about the power of connection. Uh, best place to start is probably a definition. Uh, this is Google, because we ask Google everything these days. Uh, connection is a relationship in which a person or thing did leap for associated with something else. Uh, they give an example between social attitudes and productivity. Doesn't relate to tutoring that bit, but that's Google's definition of connecting. Um, I actually found this one on LinkedIn. Uh, some of you will know Odette Fulham from Call for Cheetah. Connecting is all about nurturing genuine, meaningful relationships. It's about getting to know people on a personal level understanding their passions, their goals, their greed. It's about empathizing, supporting, and being there for one another, not just when you need something, but because you genuinely care. That, to me, is part of tuition. That's a big part of what we do at Little Beaches, whether that be for an agency, but for ourselves, that is a big part of it. So, I am gonna do three things. Very, very, very quickly, hopefully. We're gonna talk about connecting with students. Because we either work with students or we work with people who work with students. We're going to talk about connecting with their parents. Because they are the big stakeholders in this. And connecting with other tutors, which have you, you're doing right now. Which is brilliant. So, what was scroll down, pull down. I'll get really of these brain. Can you tell us? First of all, these are dogs, aren't they? I went here a tiny bit nervous. Um, we didn't notice that, but it's on its cap, so. Um, why do we connect with students? What is important about it? It supports their self-esteem. They are happier, more inclined to connect with us, more inclined to work with us, if they believe and genuinely care about them and their outcomes. It's not just a financial thing. It's not just doing it because it's a job. We actually care about what they want and what they want to be able to succeed in doing. Now that might be very loosely linked so perhaps this is my subject, I'm a GCSE maths and later on maths tutor. Most of the kids come to me and they don't want to do maths, they just have to do it. But they need to do it to get their next goal. They need to pass their GCSE skill into higher ed, further ed. So if they understand that I genuinely care that I want them to achieve that goal, so they can go off and it's not just about maths, I'm already on a good foundation with them. It helps their motivation. They are more likely to engage for those who believe them out. If your student believes that you believe in us, they are more likely to do you lost. More likely to attempt something, especially if you can also do something challenging. And this is one the big one. It allows for a safe place if a safeguarding disclosure needs to be made. We are, in many cases, one to one with our students, uh, and we are trusted adults. A student may not feel comfortable going to a teacher in school, but if you have developed a connection, they may tell you something. So it's allowing, not saying that you are going to have a safe, safe guarding disclosure, 
because in 13 years I've only ever had to raise that flag once. <clears throat> but if you created the space for that to happen, then they, they still come toward, but there's something that they need to share. And that's an okay thing. Um, another reason we do it is it builds trust. They trust us, but we know what we're talking about and that we can help them, them specifically in their situation. If they don't like fractions, I can work with them on fractions. They're not going to go off and do all the other bits of maths. I'm working with you on that because that's what you need to learn. That's one-to-one, -one, but obviously it works the same way to work small groups. Um, when a student trusts their tutor, they feel comfortable and relaxed, and then they can ask questions. Those tutoring sessions where you just sit there and the student twiddles their thumbs or doesn't look, gets a little, but you don't really feel like you're getting much from it. They're not getting much from it. They say they're able to feel that like they can ask the questions. This, what's that bit? Or we did hell, I don't do big stuff, I'll make it for well, um, But I know some tutors do, and that's fine. Um, but if they feel like they can answer you the question, that's great, because that really then starts to target what they need for us as tutors. Um, it allows us to bridge from the known to the unknown. We're taking up for things that they do know. Hopefully, we're assessing that as we go. We're looking at what they can understand. It's for the unknown. It allows us to take that step. It's always scary going to something you don't know. It's really scary doing something you've never done before. Private example, and I'll be quaking if I'm doing afterwards. <laughs> Trusting the chinkser to guide you across to what you don't know was a big part of what we do. So, how do we connect with them? I'm going to come spitball just a whole bunch of really, really quick ones here. Um, I'd love to hear your answers, your suggestions afterwards. It's okay to truly care. It's not a fake thing. We don't have to be. We can care that they get what they want. It's okay. We need to put boundaries in place because we don't want to be out at 3 o'clock in the morning worrying about whatever it is they're doing. That's too far intruding into our lives. But it's okay to care about them. It's okay to care, to cheer them on when they succeed and genuinely be cheering them on because they've done it, finally, yes. Um, so yeah, it's, like, it's not a professional. Your judgment about how do you do that is the bit that's profession. They're not crossing boundaries that shouldn't be crossed. Uh, understanding the student's comfort zone and respecting it. Now this probably applies more so for students with some form of SEMD. If you have a student that's autistic, ADHD, uh, pathological advanced, there's a whole list of them there. If you are able to understand where is their safe space and then stick to it, don't push them beyond what they can get because then they will shut down and you want them to trust. I've had sessions where they've not been in place to learn, I've failed to build up the car game with students. Just keep the relationship going because they weren't in a place where they could learn. They weren't comfortable. Jot through some of my thing. I failed miserably at that long. Listen, if they turn around and say, uh, I'm terrible at maths, don't just ask through a jump in and try and correct them. That's a phrase I've heard from pretty much all my students. I don't like maths, the bad at maths. To be fair, I've heard it from the few tutors as well that don't like maths. I always, don't jump in. Ask them some questions. See if you can see why they're feeling right. But if you jump in and say, oh, no, you're not, they're not listened to. They don't feel like they're being listened to. We need to give them the time and space, question it, give them evidence where, it's, where they are actually good at maths or whichever subject it is that you happen to be doing. Provide them evidence, give them support so they can come to that realisation themselves. But if you jump in right at the start and say, no, you're not, You've broken some of that trust between me because you're not listening to what they're saying. Uh, be authentic. Don't pretend to be somebody you're not. You are an individual, you are a human being, you have your quirkiness. It's just like I have mine. If you can show them that little bit, relax, don't try and put on a face when, you know, especially students that have social anxiety issues, they can see that. Or they won't be able to see that, and then we've got trust issues and communication issues going off. Be authentic. And you might not have got too long. Um, yeah, they can tell what's helping. Um, it's okay to not understand what is interest, uh, 
not but uh, it's okay to not understand what they're interested in and it's okay for them not to understand yours but if you are in you you're not putting on the front you're not putting on the face they will see that and respect it okay uh pilot positives how the one had done some good again especially for us in these students but we know that what works for us in these students generally works for both students as well tell your mind they've done something good use your words don't just beam at them actually in the uh autistic students why necessarily read social cues for you as a teacher the tutor or teacher or their parents are giving them use your words tell them fantastic you did a good job with that bit of fractions there all right it's always going to be fractions that's my go-to example because students don't like fractions for some reason um and again go with a down the same message they do work out how to accommodate their needs if they are dyslexic and they need a different color screen work out how winter would provide that either with different color paper or if you were using an online tool can you change the background if they need move or breaks brain breaks schedule that 10 minutes of learning five minutes of brain breaks there's lots of training out there for how many can support students with SEODs of a variety, but whatever their needs are, try and accommodate them, work out. Because you're showing interest in what works for them as a student. What works for their learning, because we all learn in different ways. Okay, so some quick and easy little tips. Shanti looks sort of the desk. Now, I don't know how many of you have found Arthur Moore's tutoring tips. There are three minutes of tips. So I'm just long enough to listen to when to boil the kettle, hence the tea conversation. Uh, there are some great tutors on that. Mine was checking in at the start of the session. If you check in, see it's in a good day, a bad day. See if they've done something nice over the weekend, showing an interest in them. And if it's not a good day, you can slow down your teaching. You can pivot your teaching. You've got options. If you've done that little check-in, hi, how are you doing? How was your weekend? Fantastic. It's really exciting. How was the maths today? Very slowly moving in, checking in. Doesn't need to be long, just a couple of minutes, doing the polite thing. The how, how are you doing? But genuinely meaning what it is. Uh, try and remember the key dates and important things. If they are going to be playing a football game at the weekend, they can to it, scroll it down, and then at the next session, Ask them how their football game went. You don't need to have a long conversation about it, but it shows that you care about them as a person, not just as a student to you. Uh, birthdays is another good one. Somebody mentioned this earlier. If you use a scheduling software, software like TutorBird, there is an option to send a message to your student or the student parent on their birthday. Recognise them as their birthday, wishing them a happy birthday. Fantastic. It's an important day for them. Uh, and if you know those key things, those important things, you can relate your subject to those. It makes it infinitely more interesting if you are relating your subject to what they're interested in. If you can maths, so I'm back on it. Fractions. You could just teach numbers of fractions. I teach fractions with cake or pizza or chocolate. To be fair, we come out of the session really, really, really hungry. <laughs> but every student can picture what a cake looks like. They can see how to cut the cake in the lots of difficult ways. It gives them something to picture. Well, I've done averages and probability from the Premier League tables. I know squats about football. I learned a little bit about football. But you find out what their team is and go, okay, if they scored this last year, what's the next one going to make? How likely is it for them to win the next game using uh, experimental probability? And that draws them in. It interests them rather than just doing it in a bland way. Yes, there are some subjects we have to teach the actual stuff. There is knowledge that we need to impart, but if you can, try and present it in a way that interests them. Uh, where we go? Make it in safe space to make mistakes. That's how we grow. We make mistakes, we see how it, what we've done wrong, and then we learn and grow from that. Uh, and if possible, make your own mistakes. They can be deliberate mistakes. They can be accidental mistakes. Those, those are okay too, because it shows the way human. We're fallible. It shows the us as a people. As a people? This way I teach maths and not English. <laughs> My grammar is not good. Uh, 
So yes, make your own mistakes. Share where you've made your own mistakes. It makes us human. It's not quite the same as being a teacher in the classroom when you've got 30 children in front of you. Being one-to-one, one-to-three, one-to-test, the school groups, we can make those mistakes. It's okay to be fallible. Do share a little bit about yourself. Now, boundaries. This is a boundaries moment. Don't share something that's not appropriate. Your student does not need to know that you've had marital. You've got all your kids are driving you up the wall. But I have a Lego behind me when I'm teaching online or on the table. Uh, I'm a Lego fan. There we go, I did put that one up earlier. I like Lego. But it starts a conversation. It shows them me again. I'm a human being. I'm not a machine. I'm a person. You can connect with me in the same way. Um, hold on. Yeah, I wrote too much. Um, yeah, so that connect with students in a whistle stop. I've got no idea of the time. Somebody shout him when I get to Chico's Korea. Uh, next one then. Connect with parents. Why can you connect with parents? We do it to connect, to develop trust between the parent and the tutor. It makes tutoring more effective. If we are all the same page with this to the parents, who are often the people that are paying the bill, they're the ones that we're actually looking for. It makes it more effective if we made a good, trustful relationship with them. Parents don't know much about tutoring. They often feel like it's like school, and I think with experience, you find that it's not. You can be so much more relaxed and different uh, to the way that it's running in school. So we need to show up as a professional tutor, the consultant, the experienced one, we're the ones that know that education, we're the ones that know our subjects. Sometimes we need to talk about that, sometimes we need to feel, they need to feel like it can relate to us, to parents, or us, other uh, people. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we can share what flirt before. If you develop experience, you can share, I had a student like this before, it's okay, I know what I'm doing. We'll try this first, see if that works. They can then learn to trust us. So, uh, the really reason why is to communicate and clarify your expectations. Here's the basics. How much is your lessons? How much do you charge? How do I pay you? Do you set homework? Where is the link for the session? How do you tell me what I want to know? How do you feed back that this isn't working for you? Or, actually, Johnny needs this. How would they do that? That's all developing that communication with them. So it's really important to develop those methods. You can do it via uh, things on your website. You can do it via email marketing. Um, some template that you send out now from the start uh, to say this is my network policy, this is, and you can refer back to it that way. If you set it up from the start, they know what to expect, so they can refer back. You'll end up with less of the, oh, I didn't expect to pay you like this, or oh, can I pay you that way? If you've set what your boundaries are, this is what you expect as a professional and communicate with them. you developing trust with the parents. Parents are, however, the experts in their child, more so than the teacher in the classroom, then that is a fantastic source of information. Parents know how their children work. They know how, what their children need, the environment, and they have a lot of influence. So if you, the parent is in a good relationship with you, then you are more likely to have the child, student, respect in you as well. Wait. Uh, there we go. Now, even more so if you've got a child with additional needs. Herbert will know what has worked before, what hasn't worked before. And that's what I've seen. I try the things that have worked because it might work for you and not for somebody else. But it's a starting place. The, the parents are the people that are going to be able to tell you this is what I need from a shooter. This is what they need. This is how they work. They need light bags. Can you do a little bit like that? That's why I need to communicate and connect with their parents. Um, well, that's best place on any adult students is other parents. Other parents will talk about you at school gate. Fantastic place to gossip, school gate. Mm-hmm. Um, saying that with my parent count all as well. Um, say, oh, Freddie's not doing very well with maths. Do you use a chinter? Who do you know? Word gets rant quite quick, especially in local areas. Um, so if you've developed a good connection, a good relationship with your parents, they are more likely to pass your name on. 
more likely to sing your praise, more likely to give you a review on Google or Facebook, more likely to give you feedback because they have developed the trust. They know that they can say something to you, then you'll take it on board. Might not fit, but you can listen to it and adjust. But as she thing here, you are the experts. You are the tutor. You are the person with the pedagogical background. You know how to deliver your subject. You know how to teach. Don't let them push you around like that. You can listen, but you are the experts. And you need to think about that's your mindset. I am a professional. Uh, how? Uh, this is good. I've been in a minute conversation with this recently. Um, how do you connect parents? Some people do an on-morning call and visit, video call. Some connection before you start tutoring to make sure that you've done a good picks. And then one tutor that does it is a three-way between them, the student, and the parent. Because if she decides that she work with the student, that the parent's going to be pushy, then you might not want to work with them. Or at least you're going to get your expectations ready that this, this parent is going to be the one that is emailing me at one o'clock every morning. If you don't want to work with that parent of that student, you've had that conversation before you've invested time, before you've invested energy. And if you're not the right fit, that's okay. You're allowed to say, I don't think I'm the best fit. Here's a recommendation. That's quite them straight in a minute. <laughs> Preempting it. Um, at the end of sessions, you can do a little quick report. I know people will do voice notes if they're uh, parents or WhatsApp with them. Uh, if you use Tutor, Tutor Crutcher, and all those scheduling, uh, CRM, Doodle, Hot Sip, Magics, Systems, there's an option to put uh, a quick report. One line, two lines. He did this today, he was great at that. It just keeps sending the loop. That can send it automatically out to the parent. You don't need to go through lots of email messages. Just a little report, keep sending in touch. They feel like they're connected and they're invested as well into the learning. Um, but yeah, as I said, don't take it personally if you're not the right choice. That's okay. There are plenty of fish in the sea. And what one fit one sheet set is not necessarily going to fit with London. Uh, you can ask for the feedback questions. You can send out an email. Ah, oh, been great working with you for the last half term. Uh, fantastic. You can leave me a little Google review, a little Facebook review. And if there's anything else, feel free to just drop me an email or here's a Google call. We'll call about tech, save you your name. And that's about to better. If you're connected with parents, then they can feel like comfortable enough to tell you what, they, what they're experiencing because they see it in the other side. Um, there we go. Do you hassle with them? Part two, part B, selling. As I said earlier, you are not selling to the student. If you are marketing to private clients, you are not trying to get the student to pay for you. It's the parents that are going to pay. We're all school, or the local authority. They are the people that are going to be footing the bill, and they should push work with adult learners. But majority of the time, you need to sell yourself to parents. You need to show why you are the person that they can trust. So parents can have they will choose a tutor that they feel rapport with. Some that they feel can identify their needs and fix somebody that they trust. It's not like school. Parents never say understand this. In school, you are stuck with a teacher for at least a year. And if there's somebody that you don't get on with or the students aren't getting on with, a lot you can do apart from hold that attributes, try to support them and push in a tutor, but that's by and by, that's what we do. Not parents realise that you can sh you have a variety of tutors to choose from. Especially if you would go to the down the online route, there are hundreds, thousands of us out there that teach you online. So they need to, there's something that hopes that they're going to develop as tutoring becomes more and more prevalent, that they can choose. They can choose the, pair, the tutor that works for them. The time, the slot, and the character, the connection, if you made that connection in how you're selling yourself, they look at you and go, oh, Helen talks about this on Facebook. I feel like I can trust. I think she's going to be in person. Then you're going to get the inquiry, if the leads. We, sorry, nurse. You're going to get the inquiries. You're going to have to get the leads coming in. Um, this is where the, um, if you were in Helen's session earlier, sorry, I'm going to be that pan for my part of Monday's club. Uh, email marketing. If you are slowly coming across in their social media, if you're in their emails, Showing up, giving a little bit of value, showing that I can trust you, who you are, you'll be able to get more people watching you from the outside, looking. And then when they're ready to make a commitment to a shooter, you're going to be one of the first names on their list. Um, 
to go with what I've had on social media, put your face out there on social media, headshots later, go and get a nice headshot from Kate, and then put that on your social media. Put it on your marketing, anything that's going out there, because it's you that they trust. Logos, fantastic. Branding, great. It's you as a person that they're going to trust. Uh, this is the, none of my trust is a marketing thing, just generally. People get to know a company, they get to like what that company's selling, and then they start to trust that that company is going to be the best choice for them, and then they commit. So, real important thing there. Show up on social media, show your face. I know it's horrendous. I hate in my face in social media. I hate, yeah, not good. But if you can put your face in it, fantastic. They know you before you even get to a phone call. And yeah, perfect opportunity. Kate's got photos. I ain't saying it fast. If you look at my social media, that's where I got wind up this time last year. Um, fantastic. I don't know why I'm doing on time. I'm on cake. Do they out but They are already. You hit deep, but deep. She turned two. I've got no idea. And can't say far. She'll be fed. Oh, I'm dead. Very good feet. Five bits of the tutors. Most of them are nice. Lots coming in these well, this Some of them are in this tater. We're not all books. I'm not going to say who's the insane ones. That was from a fellow tutor when I asked. Why do we connect? That was her words. Very quickly, so the whole community, you're not the first, you're not the last. They will be chief to call you, they will be chief to come after you. They will be able to remind, recommended to these sort of all. Things like, choose a bird, choose a crotch show, any of those sort of things. Somebody else to listen. Because if you have a phone about how something's not working, or it's been that kind of day, it's somebody else that knows exactly what you've been through. Somebody else has been there first. And somebody else have probably got the option, got the answer. There's done it, but try this, try that. Uh, that is inspiration and collaboration. You might see what somebody else is doing and chicken up. Oh, that's a good idea. I could tweet that and make that suitable for my subject or in my area. Or you can collaborate. I'm working on Bolt, I'm sure Jim was hoping for the big area. She's not. We're doing something between STEM and Max. I know Max is at STEM, but biology and Max. Don't usually go hand in hand. Lord Matt biologists are come and call their maths. We're not working on something together for that. And we've got to know each other over the years to be in a place where we can collaborate. Um, and the syllables. Like four. I have a wait list. Fantastic. In the meantime, if you're waiting for me, and if you have a look at this person, this is a great tutor in your neck of the woods. And hopefully, if you've got to know other tutors, they can do the same thing back to you. I don't teach. English, I know exactly who I'm going to for an English tutor because I've got to know other tutors. So somebody comes to me and says, Helen, do you know an English tutor? Yes. There's two or three names. Go and check them out. One of them might be a good fit. Um, we go. Uh, so a place to do it. Yeah, me up. Go on to the cup of tea in a minute. Do a chat to all the tutors. Get to know them, get to know the subjects. You might be, have absolutely nothing to do with each other after this, but you'll get to know somebody else. Uh, there are Facebook groups. Shoot of being tutors, there's Georgina's uh, Tutors Learning Network, and one given tutor, tutor read this, this success sport. There's too many S's in that. Um, all three, three Facebook groups, uh, right places to go and get support, ask questions. Uh, and the big one that has probably made the biggest decline, I am part of, can you give me three minutes, sorry. So we're in this one, so it might keep talking for a minute, now I'll go back at the end. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah, fantastic. So I'm the part of our cheetah crew. Um, the biggest growth in my business and me as cheetah is they've been part of their freak meeting. Uh, I've been part of it for about three, four years now. Um, I've won awards, right, I've won awards, I've won four awards. I've stood here doing this. I want to be doing this. If it hadn't been for the support there, this time I've copped and know the cheetahs um, and developed my skills. It's just lovely. Everyone wants to help each other out, in fact. It's just fantastic. There were a few of us that are members. Um, ask somebody for every night, so I'm pretty sure of members. It's been really helpful and to get support. Uh, so, as part of that, because you've listened to me wittering on for the last 20 minutes, good job, thank you, you've made it to the end. Um, they've got exclusive offer. Their membership, which involves their training, their their due price DBS, uh, their qualified chief directory, uh, the send trading, business coaching, tech demos, the pencil guys who were around with them. Uh, they've got part of the discount, all that sort of stuff involved. Um, you get 15% off the essential, that's just one, one person tutor, for life, using that code. That's the Chiefs Association, Heather Boltzmann 23, for those that got the code. Um, but you've got to use it for Halloween. And the 30th of October. 
uh, the link and the QR code to take you to the signs. But put that code in, take a picture of it, uh, do all of that. Um, there we go. I knew I was going to want to evolve. Um, if you want to connect this day, I'm using Omic 10. Um, I love Omic 10. Um, that's me. You can scan that one. You can just like this. Helen Osmond. At the top of the list, and I'm ginger. It's not that hard for my Like, where did that out of it? Yeah, I take a photo from last year. There you go, headshots. Um, and again, anyone got any quick thoughts? Uh, that was the one that I had everybody else. Yeah. Oh, I talked. I no, I have a in the Kick it up, you can't even get in the white point. You have to be on the airline again. And then I know that one tilted. Yeah. So there we go. That's the portal, though. That's the portal. If I choose one, we'll all set that and skew our kind of thing. I think you just go to the portal, but you'll find that the boat, uh, especially, is always very, they're very trying. So you can like it, there we go. We're not getting people take the pictures. We've heated that already. And. Mate! Do you think they know? Do you think they open it like that? Whoa! I made it to the end. Well, we're down to another it could have So yeah, tell us you don't like to see it. Internet would make me worry. You know how to breathe. They're like, I'm not going to put it. They're like, I'm not going to put it.